what is up team welcome back to my channel what is up team welcome back to my channel my name is andy so it's been a while <laughs> um, and there are a few more of you here on the channel which is crazy your support has just continued and continued even though I've been super super busy so welcome to all of you who are new and welcome back to the rest of you who have been here. I have been receiving your messages about application, about acceptances, about just generally life and honestly they make me so so happy. I can't believe how close we are to a thousand what is happening <laughs> the reason why it's been a while is obviously i got covid you saw that in my second last video and then that impacted placement which was really frustrating and a really frustrating time for me we're back to online schooling now with dissertation on the side and obviously job applications and everything which is crazy and hectic and i can't believe everything you know what's happening in today's video i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about note taking so over the course of my time on YouTube. I've gotten so many comments about note taking, whether that be about anatomy, general, self-study, about lectures and so on. So I wanted to focus down on this and I don't want to make this a kind of half an hour plus video. So I've decided to kind of split up the note taking series. So instead of one singular video, I'm going to split up my note taking series into different sections. This one is going to specify down on lectures. This is mainly because obviously currently I just started this unit. I'm going to have a lecture and show you guys that at the end. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe and turn those post notifications on. I love you guys honestly so much. I don't think you guys understand how much I've smiled from your comments and your messages. Obviously disclaimer, everyone does their notes differently. This might work for me, this might not work for you, this might work for someone else. What I'm going to try and do is give you a variety of different options, but of course I'm going to be able to give most detail in what I do. Hopefully through the different options that I talk through it'll kind of give light to maybe what works best for you. So I actually watched a video at the beginning of my university time um, on note taking and I'll link it down below but they kind of split it up into product function and process function. So process function is the ability to kind of write your notes in the session and comprehend and be able to understand. And then product function is your ability to review those notes and understand those notes. So kind of the effectiveness of your ability to write your notes in the session and then the effectiveness and the quality of those notes actually after the session. Now, these two are very, very important when deciding what format do you want to write your notes in because there are a variety of different ways you can write your notes, obviously. You have your laptop, you have your standard notebook, free writing, you have printed out lectures, notes on the side, you have tablets. A tip when writing your notes is to not just copy what your lecturer or teacher is saying because that doesn't mean that you're actually understanding and intaking what they're saying. I know one of the hardest things for me when handwriting is that I'm a bit slower handwriting than I am typing. So I prefer typing because it allows me to listen to my lecture and type at the same time. If you're a fast writer or if you are able to write and listen, then totally choose that way. For me, I'm kind of one of those people who can type while not looking. Like I can look up at the slides and look up at the lecture and type at the same time. So for me, that's kind of the most efficient way. But again, the main thing is that you're just taking out and pinpointing the main points because you will receive those slides and you're just trying to support extra information that he or she is saying. So as I say, obviously laptop works best for me. Eventually, I'm hoping to get an iPad because um, Jules is really convincing me because she recently got an iPad and of course she always shows me like the different things you can do on iPads and it's super super good. Again, I don't know if I would necessarily use it um, within a session, but it's definitely something I could use outside. And that's kind of mainly why I wanted to split the video up as well is because I use two different 
formats and one specific to one thing and one specific to another. And obviously at the moment it's online schooling. So I feel like this is relevant more than ever because everyone's doing online schooling. Everyone's got lectures and classes and everything online. The next thing is, is because we're at home and you've got your phone, you've got, you know, family, you've got music, try to eliminate those distractions. Try to put everything to the side because you've got class. And in that session, they are saying really valuable things. Now, of course, you can have some people that are literally just reading off of slides, but for the majority of the time, they are saying very, very important things and you might miss it. And I feel like I'm quite an auditory listener. So um, I like listening, I like visual, I like typing to solidify. Um, so for me, these classes are very, very important. So I try to push all and eliminate all of my distractions. So I'm really just focusing in on the lecture and it can be a bit difficult because sometimes, you know, it might be a one and a half, it might be two hour lecture and you're just there like, my brain is about to explode. But I think by eliminating those distractions, it kind of allows you to really focus in and write really good quality notes. The other good thing that I find on the computer, especially during online schooling, is that you've got kind of your lecture on your computer and I like to have my screen split. So it'll be split into my lecture and then split into my notes. And one of the things that I like to do is, you know, if there's a slide that has a certain graph or a certain picture that would be valuable in my notes is that you can literally just screenshot the screen right then and there and drag it into your notes and it's just super super easy if you're an artiste then you could always quickly doodle it once you've kind of chosen your format and you're not transcribing you're actively listening then you can kind of go into what type of note taking method do you want to take do you want to take the cornell method which is where you have a topic um like your title on the left side you put a line and then you write your notes here and then you kind of have a summary at the bottom. Do you want free flowing, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point? For me, I kind of do it in free flowing, not really, but kind of similar idea because personally, the Cornell method is really good for when you're doing your self-study, but when it comes to lectures, it's kind of what is the most time efficient and learning efficient. The best way for me to do it is split up into weeks. This is four weeks of EBP. So my title of my notes will be week one lecture notes, right? And then I'll have a subheading of lecture H and then I'll go next and then I'll bullet point. So first bullet point might be the title of that slide or the title of the topic that she's talking about within that lecture. Um, but then I'll use a bunch of indents. So if I show you actually, so if you see, I'll do like the title of the slide and I'll do indents. See, look, this is an example of where I've screenshotted a specific figure. But as you see here, I indent quite far into it. And that's okay, sometimes, I know originally I was quite reluctant to indent that far, but if it helps you understand and it helps you give examples, why not? Um, I find a bullet point format kind of um, allows me to abbreviate and make very succinct notes. But that also allows me to write kind of really solid summaries at the end if I want. And I love it because when I go back and if there's a specific section I'm looking for, I've titled each section. So it's really quick to look back. Oh, what are the two different types of pain beliefs? Well, look, look, look. Well, there's organic pain and psychological pain. I think when it comes to lecture notes, it's quite straightforward, but sometimes you don't realize how straightforward it is until either someone's told you or you've experienced and you've gone through, you know, the ups and downs of looking through notes and being like, you know, I wrote some really shite notes that lecture. I really wish I wrote better notes. In first year, I actually opened up PowerPoint. I downloaded the slides beforehand and some people would print out these slides and then print it in a way where you have four four slides on each and you can do it so that it has like lines next to the slides as well which is really good if you're handwritten notes and you want kind of small photos of the slides then definitely go for that for me i actually downloaded the slides and i wrote extra information in the bottom but what i found was that when i was looking back those notes weren't the best <laughs> so i'd go back and i'd read them and i'd be like they made sense when I was writing them, but now I have no idea what you meant by that, Andy. 
which can be really frustrating because it might be really valuable. Now I create different documents. So I have a Word document and I split screen it. So then I have my lecture on one side and a Word document on the other. But of course, as I say, you find your own method that works best for you. So once you have those lectured notes, you can make summaries at the end, whether that be again, bullet point version or where you just take out the main point. Personally, I don't feel like I need to do that because I feel like my notes are already quite condensed, even though they might be long because of the amount of bullet points, they're quite straightforward to read. My lecture is in about 50 minutes. So I'm going, I have my daily planner, which I'm gonna write my plan for today. Because today's quite hectic, you know. In the meantime, Please subscribe if you haven't already. I am watching you. <laughs> Hopefully for those who are in first year or second year or foundation or normal school, that has kind of helped you a little bit. You've got multiple different ways, but kind of play it out a little bit. We have so many classes and lectures throughout the year. You could always just initially try out different methods, see what works best for you. And then once you find what works best for you, then you'll be making super quality notes which is exactly what you want. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you when the lecture starts. We just stop reading it at 10 pages. So if you go- We're just basically going through the assessment process for this unit. The notes won't be that long, if anything, for this lecture. It's more so just listening, but kind of the key points to remember, I will write down. So today I have three lectures and what I loved is that two of the lectures we actually had speakers come in and talk about their experience and keep it specific to our pain module. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy that. I hope that you know, gave you a little bit of advice on what to do and how to find your own way when it comes to lecture notes. I hope that also kind of gave you a little bit of insight into how I write my lecture notes as well. Remember to like and subscribe, spread the word. I hope you guys are doing well. Again, leave me any stories, any updates or anything down below or message me on Instagram. And yeah, so I love you guys so, so much. Remember you're capable of more than you realize and I'll see you next week. Bye.